today we're going to be doing a different type of video, only because I, I think it's comical, I think it's sad, I think it's, it's got everything. For you guys that saw the movie Scarface, one of the, one of the lines in Scarface was, never get high on your own supply. And there's a good reason why a lot of drug dealers went by that rule. Because if you can imagine have, having tons of cocaine, and, you know, it, it'll kill you. And it almost did. John Uribe, the Medellin drug kingpin of the 80s. And the story goes like this. I believe it was 1985. I myself was doing cocaine at that time for four years. But I didn't really do a lot of it. I just did a little bit, and that was good enough for me. But my six foot two Colombian friend, he just shoveled that thing in. And when you first start doing cocaine, it's they, they used to refer to it as nose candy. Take a blast, makes you more social, and so on. But then as the your addiction progresses, it turns into an ugly, ugly high. You get high, 15 minutes later, you're thinking everybody's a cop. They're going to come and get you, and the paranoia sets in. And that's what happened on this summer day in 1985. So all of a sudden, John Uribe goes missing. Can't find him. He just rented a beautiful apartment on, 6th, on 34th Street, on 33rd Street and 6th Avenue. Big building, I don't know, 50 stories. He was on like the 32nd story. And his window faced 34th Street. New York City, the famous 34th Street. It runs from east to west, runs from the uh, East River to the Hudson River. Big, big avenue filled with hundreds, if not thousands of people every day. So he goes missing. Me and my first wife, Beth, we go looking for him because he's been doing a lot of stupid things lately. And um, he was... He had a 930 turbo Porsche. He would race it. The things that he was, he was just a, a mess. So he goes missing, so we go to his apartment. I look at the garage. The 930 turbo is there. Go upstairs, and I start banging on the door. And he ain't opening it, and I can hear someone's in there. I go down. I look under the door, and I can see pots and pans and what's going on in here. And I just kept banging on the door until finally he opened it. He opened it, he's in his briefs, naked, just in the briefs. And he unlocks the door, he walks ahead of me, and he sits down in like an Indian position, legs crossed, in front of a pot with soapy water, and a pot with clear water, and a bunch of photographs from his recent Cancun trip with his new girlfriend. So as it turns out, they broke up, and he's in the house for three days. He broke open a, co uh, a kilo of cocaine. Now this is pure cocaine. It's right out of the key. And he's been sniffing that for three days. And he's sweat. And I'm thinking he just got out of the shower, but no, it was sweat. He was sweating. And he sits down on the floor and he continues doing what he was doing. He would take the photographs from his Cancun trip, dip it in the sudsy water, then dip it in the rinse water, and then use his chest as a towel, and then stack them up. And there was a, there was a bunch of pictures about this big that were in water. You could tell they were all wrinkly. And what the hell is going on in this place? So I go, listen, you, what are you doing? And he's mumbling, he's incoherent. I says, listen, come on, we gotta take you home. I'm, me and my wife, my wife, Beth, at the time, she loved the guy. I mean, Johnny Ruby was a really good guy. He was just into drugs. His family was into drugs, I mean, but other than that, he was a really good person. And we loved him, I mean, you know. And so I grab him and I put him in the bedroom I, and I start dressing him. 
and I wipe them down with the towel, and I'm getting his clothes on. And come on, and I looked in the refrigerator, there was no food, no garbage. He, he was just eating cocaine for three days straight. And so there was two, coca two kilos of cocaine, an open kilo of cocaine, maybe, maybe half of it was gone. The floor was filled with white powder all over the place. And there was a triple beam OHA scale and a 64 ounce, a glass container jar of an estetol is what they used to cut the drugs. So I look at the mess, I put the open kilo in the bag, I zip it up, and I go, okay, w we're gonna go. And just then he gets a phone call, and it turns out to be his mother. Now he's flipping out again. I don't know what they're saying, they're speaking Spanish. And I hear her saying, cocaine, cocaine, go, go, get rid of it, get rid of it. So he grabs the duffel bag with the two and a half kilos in, and he runs to the bathroom, and he starts flushing it. He starts breaking it up, clawing it like a, like a madman. And he's flushing it. I'm going, when you wake up in the morning, pal, you just flush down 60 grand worth of coke. And, you know, I had to do something about it because if I didn't, he would have blamed me. Why didn't you do something? Now, this guy's six foot two. I'm five foot nine. He's 190. I'm 160. He's a big guy. And he's a hard guy to control. And so I finally rip the, I, t I take the top of the toilet tank off and I rip it open so he can't flush no more. And um, the mother's on the phone, flush it, flush it, flush it. And I give the phone to my ex-wife and I said, tell her, he's, there's nobody looking at him. There's no one across the street. And there wasn't. You know, but, the, you know, if you live in midtown Manhattan, your next door neighbor could be a quarter of a mile away and their windows are all open. Nobody, and he had no blinds on his window. He just moved in. So, um, I, I get him out, I put as much cocaine in the bag as I possibly can, I'm scooping it up the floor, I zip it up, it had a short strap, black gym bag, OHAS triple beam scale, jar of anesthetol, I got it, I got everything in, I zip it up, it had a little uh, strap, I go, come on, we're going, we're going. And as we're getting ready to leave, he runs over, he grabs the bag by the strap, runs towards the open window. Remind, remember, we're 32 stories above the ground. What does that come out to? 320 feet above the city, above 34th Street, where hundreds of people are walking back and forth. It's bustling, bustling. I can't believe I said that. It's the people all over the place. Min, min, mid-afternoon he grabs the effing bag of cocaine and he runs for the window that's open this much and he runs and he throws it right before my eyes he threw it with such force it went it didn't go down it went up and out and I grabbed him by the hair and the belt, and I pulled him away from the window, closed it, ran to the bedroom, looked out the window, and I see the black bag going, going, like a bomb. Going, going, bang. It hits a westbound New York City bus that was stopped at a light. I could hear the impact from 32 stories above the ground. So you can imagine what it must have sounded like inside the bus. You, 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 I'm waiting for people to come out. I'm waiting for a big scene. And what do I get? Nothing. The light turns green and the bus slowly drives westward. I couldn't believe it. So let's see. At the time, a kilo of cocaine was going anywhere from like 20, 21, 22,000. So there's 44,000, half a kilo that's open. That's another at least 10. That's 55, let's say $55,000 worth of coke. I watch go up the avenue. Wow. So then we take them, take them back to my house in New Jersey. Um, he wanted ice cream. 
who bought three gallons of ice cream, and he ate them in one sitting. He ate three gallons of chocolate chip ice cream, just kept shoveling it. We fed him. Took three days. He slept for like days and days at a time. Three days later, he was up and all well. And when I told him what happened, look what you did. Look, look are you kidding? Look, he didn't even remember any of it. Like, are you kidding me? You, you threw two and a half kilos of cocaine out the window on 34th Street. Are you kidding me? That's why I guess when they say, don't get high on your own supply, there's a good reason why you won't do it. Anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy that story. It didn't have to do with arresting anybody or doing search warrants or anything, but that's a, that was a pretty good school story. And uh, so you guys, please like and describe. And uh, we're going to see you on the next one. Thank you. God bless. Mwah. See, I don't know if I like this camera in my face.